What's up guys and gals, it is your buddy Goliath here with another Goliath's Rants, Reviews, and Revival Special Edition. We have another interview here with Zero, the creator, the master, the chief of all things of Terror Zone. We welcome him back with open arms, I've played the game, I've experienced Destiny Dragon, not once, but twice. I came close to defeating him, but Destiny Dragon, well, it's destiny. <laughs> so, Zero, welcome back, sir. It's great to have you here again. It's good to be back. I think it was about a year ago now. Almost we a had year. The, we had that last interview. <laughs> a lot has changed in a year, let me tell you. A lot has changed, which I'm very thoroughly impressed by playing the game and really experiencing it. The game itself is a bit of a challenge, but once you get the feel for the rules and the regulations and the card play, it can be a lot of fun. So, from where we talked last time about your book, the rules, and the card design, what really has changed significantly for TerraZone and for Mystic Media Studios? What has really changed since the year ago almost, today? Well, actually, uh, come to think of it, we didn't have Mystic Mass Media established when we first did the interview. It was I was actually just being a solo man trying to get this going at the time. And that's when I went to that one little convention just to see, oh, could I promote my work here, maybe? Uh, but around the summer, I want to say June-ish, is when I actually formed a small business with some close friends. And uh, since then, TerraZone has started actually moving because it's a lot harder to do stuff by yourself. It's a lot easier to do stuff in a team because then you can divide jobs up and be like, you're really good at this thing. <laughs> you do that. I'll handle this. You handle that. And because of that, we're, we're moving along. Which is also thoroughly impressive. I've been watching and following you on YouTube, your Facebook, everything you guys have been up to and developing is great. I love the new card dimensions and the designs. We did talk a little bit before about slight alterations as the cards are getting developed out of uh, getting towards the final premise of a full release and you're working very diligently and hard with your team and that's the best thing about developing a strong team and a strong connection is the fact that you can divvy up jobs to where strengths and weaknesses lie, which is a great thing to see with any group from Arc Studios to your group in, in many aspects. Uh, the one thing I wanted to ask though, uh, where did, was it a collaboration, the new car designs? Because I remember seeing some of the originals and mm -hmm. I'm pretty sure we'll have some lovely photos to show the fans again. Yes. Where did you get the inspiration? Was it a team collaboration or were you sitting there in a dazed, a dream? How did some of the new car designs, like I, I remember the original Destiny Dragon and the revamp and then some of the other cards, was that team collaboration or was that just uh, zero being zero? Um, the the original cards from last year was completely me. I was uh, working in Photoshop and created very very simple layouts uh, for the old cards. The new ones, on the other hand, I'm still drawing everything the same. I started reworking some of these images as well because the ones from last year are from 2015, so they're <laughs> a little old. In fact, the deck you were playing today is still uh, old, old art, actually. Uh, so slowly but surely, hopefully by the end of the year, we'll have everybody redone, like more modernized pretty much. Uh, as far as the card layout themselves, that has been a collaboration of me and my two business mates, KL Draco and Taitu. Uh, all three of us were working together to create card layouts that were simple but very easy to read. That's good to hear. It's really good to hear indeed. Now, uh, one thing I want to say, because there are, there are tons of games out there. Every year, there's The Legend of Three Kingdoms, which was one of my favorite games that was at Comic-Con, and I hope that they keep growing in their uh, aspects. I love the game. Uh, there's um, Clash of Titans, which is a game I came across at another con, but I, it slowly disappeared. I never found it again after that. What makes your game different? compared to other games that have come and gone. What makes your game stand out differently? And after playing it, I, I feel I got a good understanding of it, but for our fans and followers and ones that really want to get into it, what makes your aspect unique and different and the fact that, that it will, I, in my opinion, will be much more successful than some games that have come and gone? Right, The um, I, I, card games have been around for a while and I'm definitely fully aware of that. It's very hard to come up with a selling point nowadays because it feels like everyone's done something already. Exactly. And that was one of the issues that we faced last year where we were at the time, was I made a realization that this game doesn't technically have a selling point. So what we did was with the, with the new layouts, we also, my, my, fr uh, my friend and business mate Taitu, 
um, came up with a whole new way to play the game. And that's why we, we changed it from, oh, we have one fighting creature and a whole bunch of support mm -hmm. to um, you can have multiple fighting creatures and have little squads all throughout the field. So you, ha you can control more than one fighter at a time. So that helps the momentum of the game a little better. It's easier to catch up that way. and One player won't dominate the other. It also sped the game up because in the old game, things were kind of dragged out because it was one attack, one attack, one attack, one so attack. So and, and forth was and it was, forever. There wasn't, there wasn't, <laughs> yeah, it was, it was a little too much like in one person's favor if a certain thing happens. But now we have a little bit more of a selling point in that card positioning in this game matters a whole lot more than it does in most of the other games that you would play. And I learned that firsthand. <laughs> if you guys don't watch your strategy in this game and you really don't pinpoint your cards, we still have a pretty good layout here of what we were playing with before. Uh, if you don't really watch your strategy, you will leave yourself open to massive attacks. So you really gotta strategize two, three, four, five moves in advance. So if you have your hand predicting and understanding your opponent where they're gonna lay their cards is a key point of this game, which I found fascinating as we were playing that I was kind of just piling my cards one on top of the other, which fairly flawed me because I was just dumping support characters and thinking that it would just make a wall of monsters. That is not how this game is played. It is not like Yu-Gi-Oh, it is not like uh, uh, Magi Nation. It's not like just build up defenses and you'll be fine. No, 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 no. This takes a bit of strategy. This takes a bit of ingenuity and it takes a bit of creativity to figure out, okay, I want to go this way, then this way, then that way, then this way, and then boom, you've created a nice good pattern of monster support and uh, weapons to protect your creatures which is great um, and right now primarily you have four decks you have the earth deck yep. the fire deck the water deck and the wind deck which are th your four basic decks you start correct with. and we did talk about that a little bit you eventually want to make more decks more elementals what do you think will be the next two that follows? Where were your... Because I, as I said, I would like to see a Necro deck, a, a mm. Demon Monster deck. But what ah. are the next two decks you feel would be before anything else? What two next elements will be hitting the fandom if it goes that far? Well, similar to Demons and Necro stuff, um, the next two affinities that I have planned are actually going to be Light and Dark. Mm. Since a lot of people, my, me included, uh, really like the whole Twilight thing. I was like, <laughs> oh, we really like the lights and we really like the darks because it's like really, really dark, evil creatures and yes. then like some angelic, you know, like <laughs> elegant type creatures. So definitely bringing those two in. Uh, they're a lot more basic than the ones I have planned for afterwards, so I'd rather have them in. Also, another reason is because people, uh, characters in the uh, comic series that we're still working on, I'm still mm -hmm. working on with my brother, um, they're going to be using these affinities early on, so we better introduce them first be, uh, after our four basic guys. So we're ironing out earth, wind, fire, and water first to make sure they're all good to go. And if people are, you know, playing this game, we can start plans for light and dark uh, affinities afterwards. I look forward to and that. And then there'll be there'll be more after that, including <laughs> archetypes and mixes and all sorts of stuff. And who so. knows, you know, you might get inspiration from an outside source, from a, a fan of Terror Zone, a fan of uh, the creatures and the monsters. You never know. Fans yep. might approach you with fan work, asking for autographs. You never know what could come. Be like, you know what? I love this style. I love this drawing. Uh, may we buy this from you to create a new deck monster? You never know what could come of it. You never know in the future. Nope. Exactly. Um, is there anything really that the fans should know about getting into this game? Like we talked about strategy, we talked about development. Is there really something that the fans should know about getting into Terror Zone? Because obviously, uh, we talked about decks will have 50 cards, mm -hmm. there's support characters, assist characters, uh, elemental, there's uh, magical items involved too. Uh, we have, um, the Elemental Force, Earth, Fire, Wind, Water, yep. which I know there's more to the game than everything we've gone over, but anything in particular that fans should really know about when they get into Terra Zone, like uh, something you feel that they, everyone should know about going into this game? Um, the, the, uh, the only thing I would say is it's something that you brought up earlier in the interview actually, was that starting your first game is probably going to be very rough. You're probably going to be very confused. You're probably going to like, what? This game doesn't make any sense. But I've had, this has happened during our alpha test that has just come and gone. Uh, there were people that I played against and they were like, oh, this doesn't make any sense. I don't get this. And then like halfway through, it's like, 
Oh, I'm starting to get that. I'm starting to get this now. And then like, it's either, it's usually like either halfway through your first game or probably your second, maybe third game, you'll start to really feel, you know how it works. And then once you get the basics down, it's, that's when the, the more advanced stuff comes in where it's like, all right, optimally, I need my terrain here. And so that I could play cards here to form squads in this formation. And then ones here to form cards in this uh, formation over here. Fun fact, I'm still working on that part. So the creator himself <laughs> is still learning his own game yes. and developing his own strategies, which means eventually you will be the equivalent of Pokemon Red. You'll know everything, you'll have everything, but you yourself are still learning your own game, mm -hmm. which is great because no game is automatically perfect. Development yeah. and growth is a great thing. That's why many card games, as I stated earlier, have come, have gone, and sometimes some card games go too big too quickly, and we've watched them fizzle out, which is heartbreaking yeah, because it's not they great. seem like they could be a wonderful thing to create and go on forward with. Um, with that being said, uh, Zero, it has been a complete honor and privilege having you on the show again. Likewise. Um, but I cannot wait to see what you guys are going to pump out. I'm looking forward to all the gameplay, more information from TerraZone, because guys, I can promise you, I played just two rounds and I actually am hooked a little bit. Uh, I do recommend, in my personal opinion, in, in this interview, I like the fire deck. I feel it was very easy to handle. The cards are very simple and simplistic with their summonings. I also played with the water deck, and I feel the water deck was slightly a little more advanced, but I think the fire and earth deck from what I was reading are a little bit easier for a nice small beginner, and I feel water and wind are for a little bit more slightly advanced, I think, in my opinion. But uh, what do you feel about that? Which decks um, do you feel are a little bit easier than the others? I feel like it's wind and fire, actually. And fire. Uh, Earth, has, you have to be strategic with the slab token placements. And then for water, it's like that, but for the opponent's field, because you uh. want to strategically place your flood tokens down. <laughs> and so that way, when things are next to a flood token, you can choose it to discard it and have all sorts of control-like effects. Meanwhile, wind is just like, all right, I move that out of the way, now I can attack you directly. Or, all right, I'll play this and I move three cards wherever. Uh, fire, I just want to get big and beefy. <laughs> yeah, exactly. That's why I like fire. Just, just, you you kind of down a little the, power onto it, it's great. But plop again, down those flame tokens and just <laughs> go in. <laughs> Zero again. Thank you again. Thank you so much for coming on the show again. We definitely want to get a full interview with your team one day. That would uh, be great. That'd be great to have everyone's opinion. And I know there's collaborations with the team within it and everything. So we look forward to that, guys. Remember to check out Arc Studios. Check out Mystic Mask Media. <laughs> yes. And remember, keep following Art Studios. We got a lot coming. Uh, we were going to do more crossovers with more artists and so much more to come, guys. So, Zero again, thank you so much. Yep, thank you, Goliath, for having me again. Uh, privilege, sir. Great privilege. So, thank you guys so much. Have a lovely night. And as always, see you next time. <laughs>